like cross between Lana Turner and Rita Hayworth in this wig. I'm just, just saying. Hey, hi, it's me, Wilma Fingerdoo, with the Fingerdoo review of RuPaul's Drag Race at Fania, the finale. Finally, not only is the finale here, but <laughs> so's my review. I apologize for my delay. Uh, I hope that y'all weren't holding your breath, but uh, it's been it's been a little busy. Life has been getting a little chaotic. So before we get to the review, which I know you've waited far too long for already, hi hey! Drink me! Ooh, look. Why isn't there no ice in it? It's melted. It's so hot. It's so hot. Mmm. Mmm. At least it's cold. Just want to send a shout out to Pauline from Australia for sending me these glasses. Mmm. Cheers indeed, Pauline. All right. So let's get to it. Well, we kick this episode off with a fond farewell to Poopy Poison and... As much as Carmen said the joy of Drag Race España had left the building, there's a big part of me that thinks well, she's glad to see her go. I don't think they got along well, mostly because, well, they were a threat to each other. Just me? I was surprised to hear Killer say that Poopy was very supportive of her when she was starting out. Where was any of this information throughout the season? No one said anything to anyone about nothing. I guess it's easier to say nice things when people aren't around, I'm just saying. Seriously. No, that's why you never hear it. Well, not everyone was nice. Sagittaria told Killer it should have been her, but she was kidding. Or was she? Killer admitted to growing as the season progressed, so she could see how some would think of her as an underdog in those first few weeks. Carmen was proud of the fact that she didn't lip sync once during the competition. So she should, but we still have one more episode to go, so don't count your lip syncs yet, is what I'm saying. Seriously. The thing I like about Carmen is what she'll say behind everyone's back. Her assessment of her competition is that Killer is the most versatile queen, whether you like her or not. Well, guess who doesn't like Killer? I'm just saying. And Sagittaria is blonde. Needless to say, the three surviving members of Las Metal Donnas were very happy to share the top three spot in the finale. Poor Ugathio. They were already plotting to edit her out of their song. That's sisterly love right there. And with one last cheer to being in the top three, the queens de-dragged and got ready for the last leg of the race. The next day, the top three entered the workroom a la Charlie's Angels. Of course... They couldn't help commenting on how empty the workroom was now that, well, the finale was there. They reflected on that first day and what they thought of each other, which is always fun. Sagittaria already knew Killer, so she was happy to see a familiar face. But as for Carmen, she expected her to be a scamp, which is a polite way to say troublemaker. Or it gets lost in the translate. I don't know Spanish. Carmen had seen Sagittaria on social media, but when she met her, she thought she would be taller and look more like a model. Thank God the alarm sounded before Carmen could hand out any more backhanded compliments. And there on the video screen was Valentina. Out of drag? No. No way. I'm going to call BS on this one. Valentina would never show up on Drag Race out of drag. Certainly not with all that facial hair. Seriously. Harry Valentina told the queens that their maxi challenge would involve lip syncing in English without a mask. Yes. And then there was Supreme in a gambling theme suit for some reason to explain the maxi challenge. The queens would be lip syncing to RuPaul's You Wear It Well in English. This apparently seemed harder than it sounded. Carmen, for instance, had very little experience in English, while both Killer and Sagittaria did. In fact, Killer even said she preferred to lip sync in English. Yeah. One thing was clear, Carmen was not a fan of this song. Way to kiss up to the person whose contest you're competing in, Carmen. Seriously. While all this was going on, the queens had tea with Supreme. These were charming chats that tried to reveal more about the queens on a personal level. Killer Queen was created when her church group, where she taught Sunday school, put on the musical We Will Rock You. Killer had so much fun portraying Killer Queen that she continued to pursue drag, but 
anonymous messages started to show up on her church's website saying someone like that shouldn't be around children. So she was pressured to quit. It was a sad story to hear, but I, for one, am glad that Killer made the choice she did. Here's the Killer Queen. Seriously. Horrible church. Carmen had humble beginnings with a father who blacksmithed and a mother who worked as a maid. Carmen taught herself to sew by watching her grandmother do it and buying her own machine to practice on. Can she see herself winning? Of course she can, but she didn't say it like that. She had some humble mumble prepared for supreme i'm just gonna have to say i'm sorry i feel like carmen's humility is put on i don't think she would have done the show if she didn't think she could win it seriously sagittarius started working on her drag after meeting ironically enough valentina at a work the world tour valentina told sagittarius that she was pretty enough to do drag so there was no holding her back she taught herself everything without any help from others mostly because well she didn't have any friends to rely on. She changed schools a lot, apparently, and that meant she didn't develop any close friendships and also meant she was a fairly quiet person, even after she changed schools to study performing arts. Sounds like Pandora. For the maxi challenge, the queens had to be filmed lip-syncing in front of a green screen with choreographer Carmelo Segarra. Carmen seemed very timid in her lip-sync to the song, and it wasn't made any easier when Carmelo added some choreo. As Carmen said, she'd done well in videos in the past because she was able to do her own thing. Well, that speaks volumes, doesn't it? Still, even with all her difficulties, she didn't look bad at the end of the day. That's 50% of it right there. Killer seemed to be way more comfortable lip syncing, and she had big moves and seemed to be able to follow Carmelo's choreography easier. But then... That might have been her way of flirting. I mean, it looked like flirting to me. Sagittaria looked fantastic, although I have to say I am not a fan of that belt waist. It bothers me. It looks too tight. She looks like a segmented ant. <laughs> I wish she'd had a cincher on underneath to smooth, it, smooth out the transition. Carmelo gave her a lot of hairography that was obviously way harder for Sagittaria than it looked. She ended up with her wig and her lip gloss hate that. That's why I don't dance. Then it was elimination day, and as the queens got ready, Carmen went off on some tangent about how she didn't get to know Sagittaria very well during the course of the show because of how guarded and quiet she was, and how focused she was on the contest. This hurt Sagittaria's feelings because she seemed to think that she and Carmen could be friends, but she felt this was a bitchy, calculated thing to do before the finale. I think Carmen sent Sagittaria's disdain because she changed her tune and walked over to Sagittaria to give her a hug. An awkward hug that Killer seemed more than happy to be left out of. And then it was onto the runway. I love Supreme's deconstructed matador costume and that dark wig with the floating silver waves was gorgeous. Finger do for Supreme, seriously. Because this was the finale, there were no guest judges, just the usual suspects. Las Javes, who'd obviously had a bit of a glow up, and Anna Locking, looking as lovely as ever. First up, the maxi challenge. The queens performing RuPaul's You Wear It Well. This performance happened in two parts. First off, a montage of clips of the queens lip syncing You Wear It Well. This was a great way to showcase their lip syncing skills. For the most part, I thought everyone did well, although I'd be lying if I didn't say that Carmen's wig line bothered the hell out of me. Now, don't get me wrong, my wig lines aren't always flawless either, but I just expect perfection from Carmen, especially in the finale. But the lighting in this video was not her friend. I'm also going to say that Carmen had the weakest lip sync. You could tell she wasn't as comfortable with English as the other two queens. It's too bad. She still looked good. 50%. Sagittaria, on the other hand, looked flawless. There wasn't one bad lighting angle, and the camera loved her. As far as she was concerned, if I had to pick a winner from the video footage alone, it would be Sagittaria, hands down. Seriously. Killer did an excellent job, too, but I have to say, there were a few moments where the lighting and her facial expressions migrated into the calls are coming from inside the house territory. Maybe if she'd been a touch less animated and reined it in a little, 
it would have been a bit better. I don't know. But her lip sync was flawless, so here's the killer. Seriously, well done. As for the live performance, everyone did well. But I will say this. Killer has got to stop doing her version of a death drop, which is basically just her throwing herself on the ground. It's more of a death flop, actually, and it doesn't look graceful at all. Other than that, I thought Killer did a good job. And then it was time for the Queen's final runway. Killer's Ode to Ursula from Little Mermaid was beautiful. This was full-on high drag for me, and I have no trouble giving her a finger due. Seriously. Carmen's runway was simple and elegant, but a bit boring for me. Everything seemed too understated to be considered drag, in my opinion. I still gave her a finger due, though. Sagittarius' runway took my breath away. Again, that nude fabric with the black sequin accents was just beautiful. She really is a stunning queen. My only wish was that her hair could have been a little bit bigger, but it wasn't a deal breaker, so I gave her a finger due as well. Seriously. And then it was time for the judges' critiques. Up first, Killer. The judges just loved watching Killer evolve over the season. Anna felt her turning point was Snatch Game. Supreme thought she was the one contestant who took the critiques well and applied them to her drag week after week. As great as Carmen was all season, Los Jave said the thing she'll be most remembered for will be bananas. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Sagittaria was next, and Supreme cautioned her to stay grounded because after this show, the world is going to know who she is. And it could go to her head. I don't know. There's lots of room up there for things. I have to say. And then they brought back all the queens from season one. The Macarena looked fabulous as a Transformer. I gave that look a finger due. Drag Volcano was stunning with all those feathers. She, of course, got a finger due. Inti looked good, if not a little underwhelming. Still giving her a finger due. Arancha was simple, but hilarious in her screen getup. Ugathio was stunning. Davima looked gorgeous, if not a little understated. And Poopy's Valkyrie was stunning as well. Finger news all around. That's all I'm saying. And then it was time for the final lip sync for the crown. All three queens had to perform. And I have to say, I'm glad that this song was slower and more emotional. We really got to see these queens perform. And I have to admit, I'm shocked that Carmen was the only one to have reveals during the lip sync. She removed that organza over skirt and then had a wig reveal. Although, I wasn't a big fan of her second wig, but you couldn't deny she still looked stunning. Regardless of what I thought, Las Javes wet their pants and gave her a standing ovation. Of course they did. And then it was time to crown the winner. Supreme came on stage with Poopy carrying the crown and it was finally announced that the winner of season one of Drag Race, Athania, was Carmen Ferrala, as well it should be. She rocked that runway. She shone in the challenges, winning four of them, and was truly grateful for the honor on camera. What do you think? Did the right queen win? Is there another queen you'd have rather seen in the top spot? Either way, I'm more than positive that we'll be seeing a second season from Spain next year. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this season. And until the next, what is it? Holland, Italy, UK, Canada, version of Drag Race, miss me! Mwah, seriously. I'm not, I'm not denying that Carmen should have won. I, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. She worked very hard, she did an excellent job. But the thing that bothers me the most, and this is the same with the Vivian, they were standouts in their season. There was never any doubt that either of them were going to be the winner. They just did so well. And there's a level of that for me where it's kind of boring. If you're going to have a strong queen on, then have all of the queens be strong. Don't have new queens. Or have them all be new and have them all not know what they're doing and, and see who's the best at that group. I also have to say, I didn't expect much from Inti or Davima. No offense. But drag models, I feel, are one-dimensional. I feel like a drag queen is multi-dimensional. They have a lot of layers and a lot of talent in there, whereas drag models tend to just look good. I, I'm going to say that Carmen is one of the rare drag models that breaks out of that mold. She, uh, even if she really had no acting experience before this, she was fearless. And you have to be fearless. Not a bitch.